So, with this we have the <coughs> family of wavelets in general where I have dropped the subscript naught psi naught in, in general we say psi of t is a mother wave and psi subscript tau comma s given by this expression is the generic uh, ch child of the mother wave and the entire family that we obtain is called a family of uh, wavelets. Once again tau is a translation parameter, s is a scaling parameter. Just to recap the scaling parameter controls the compression or dilation state. If you are looking at values of s greater than 1, then the child is in a dilated state uh, or in a dilated shape and that acts as a low pass filter as we have seen earlier and something that we will again learn in this lecture. And when you choose values of scaling parameter between 0 and 1, then the child is in a compressed state which essentially allows us to extract the high frequency components of the signal that is it acts as a high pass filter. Just some terminology when uh, the mother wave is 0 or the child is also 0 outside a finite interval, then this mother wave or the wave is said to have a compact support and when a function has a rapid decay we say it is localized in time. So, it does not have a compact support does it that is it does not exactly go to 0 in finite time. Some examples of mother waves as you can see here uh, we have the Haar wavelet on the left top which is also historically uh, the first known wavelet proposed by Haar. It has of course, a discontinuous nature and we have Mexican hat and the real part of Morlet because Morlet waves are in general complex wavelets. So, I am showing only the real part both are both belong to the Gaussian family Mexican hat and the Morlet wavelet. Then you have Dobishi wavelet which has some nice properties that we will discuss in the context of discrete wavelet transforms. And then you have what are known as simlets which are similar to Dobishi, but different phase characteristics. Then you have Mayer wavelet and so on. So, each wave although I say wavelets here these are mother waves each wave as you can see has different characteristics and depending on what you want to analyze in the signal you choose a particular wavelet. As an example if I want to detect discontinuous very sharp discontinuities like the one I see in Haar then Haar wavelet is the ideal choice for that. But if I want to detect regularities then I choose a wavelet that is more regular that means more smooth and so on. And I should mention in passing that two of these functions that is the Mexican and Morlet wavelet do not do not satisfy the so called zero average condition that is generally required of a mother wave. We have not yet imposed that condition until now, but we will see why that condition becomes necessary in the next couple of slides. So, having understood how to intuitively arrive at the wavelet starting with a sinusoid function. We will also now understand how intuitively one can derive the synthesis equation in the case of wavelet analysis starting with the Fourier synthesis equation. So, at the top in equation 4 you have the Fourier synthesis equation where capital F is a cyclic frequency the uppercase x as usual is a Fourier transform. What I have done is I have rewritten this expression using the scaling uh, relation between the scaling parameter and the frequency. So, I have written s equals f naught by f or f as f naught by s and also replace this d f incremental uh, variable in frequency with incremental, uh, incremental variable in scaling parameter. And I replace e to the j with the uh, with the scaled wave and when you have this is for the case when these this mother wave or psi of t is not localized in time, but from functions that are localized in time we need to bring a second dimension and that is why the synthesis equation now involves in equation 5 a second dimension which is the tau. So, that is the difference between equation 4 and 5 is in equation 4 psi of t and psi s of t are spread infinitely in time, but the moment I require or I bring in a localization in time nature to the psi of t then I have to traverse along time also to recover x of t in addition to traversing along the frequency axis. Notice that I am taking the real part whereas in the in equation 4 and 5 whereas in the first expression which is a Fourier synthesis equation there is no real part because frequencies are allowed to take parameters values from minus infinity to infinity. But since we have restricted ourselves in uh, 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 in the positive 
to the positive values of scaling parameter we pick the real values of this and there is a 2 introduced so as to be able to take care of the negative side of it. So, it is all kind of intuitive one, but fairly consistent in the math. Now, the other difference between equation 4 and 5 is in equation 4 this x big x is only a function of the scaling parameter s, but now it is a in equation 5 it is a function of the local parameter in time tau, because now the size are also a function of tau. Okay. Now, when we that to a general wavelet like we did in deriving the wavelet atom. Now, this general a mother wave which is not necessarily a sine wave. When we move to the general case that is when you are looking at a general reference function or a mother wave and of course, the wavelets which have center frequency f naught then the synthesis equation in 5 takes the form given in equation 6. Of course, I have skipped all the derivations and I do not think it is really necessary at this moment. Of course, we can always uh, give you the suitable references. What is more important here is the string of developments that we have gone through starting with the Fourier synthesis equation and then introducing the scaling parameter where we have replaced frequencies with scales and then re restricted the uh, width of the sinusoid in time and then we have gener and generalizing that to functions with center frequency f naught. That means, now they are also not necessarily localized in frequency as a sine waves. That is more important than actually worrying about how to derive this equation. So, equation 4 is the Fourier synthesis equation, equation 5 is where we have introduced the scaling parameter and the translation parameter and then equation 6 is a general version that we normally see in wavelet analysis which is often presented as a recovery equation or a reconstruction equation. Now, notice that in this equation I have 1 over c subscript c and the expression for this constant so called admissibility constant is given again here in equation 6 on the right hand side, where this c of omega is a Fourier transform of the wavelet. Although I have written c star of omega times c of omega, it is essentially magnitude square of the Fourier transform of the wavelet rather than simply worrying what is this expression here, we should ask when does this c subscript c exist. And if you look at this expression, it is fairly clear that as omega approaches 0, you may have an issue unless the c of omega or the magnitude square of c of omega approaches uh, 0 more rapidly than omega itself. And that translates to what is known as the admissibility condition for a wavelet or for the mother wave, which in fact translates to the so called zero average condition. The reason being, I want the C of omega that is a Fourier transform of the wavelet to go to zero as omega approaches zero. That means, I want the Fourier transform of the wavelet to be zero at omega equal zero, uh, to be uh, straight, uh, very clear. Now, whenever a function the Fourier transform of a function is 0 at 0 frequency, then its average should be 0, because we know from the expression for the Fourier relation that the value of the Fourier transform at 0 frequency is nothing but the average value of the function itself. And for continuous functions the average is simply integral minus infinity to infinity c of t dt. So, that is the famous 0 average condition that is presented. Now, the zero average condition can be looked at in different ways and we will talk about it soon. So, now just to summarize in this slide what we have done, we have started from the Fourier synthesis equation and arrived at the synthesis equation for the signal in terms of this wavelet transform of the signal which is denoted by t big T subscript x and it is a function of tau comma s. Compare this with the short time Fourier transform which was a function of tau comma omega or z the frequency variable. Now, it is a function of tau comma scaling parameter s. With this background and with these uh, prelude, we now present the continuous wavelet transform. Of course, as I said earlier, much of what we have done that is starting from the Fourier atom arriving at the wavelet atom, starting from the Fourier synthesis arriving at the synthesis equation is not found in many texts. So, uh, this is somewhat uh, new to you probably. 
If you find that a bit uncomfortable, you can straight away look at the continuous wavelet transform as yet another transform. But those derivations have really helped us understand a very key point which is the transition from frequency to scale and another key point the connection between scale and frequency. So, this is the wavelet transform that we have just seen in equation 6. It is again here uh, has the same shape as a regular transform equation. I have integral x of t c star of tau comma s of t dt. That means, we do anticipate c to be complex valued. In fact, that is true we can have wavelets that are complex valued why not. In fact, when we start when we go back to the derivation we said uh, denote c of t as a complex exponential. So, it is possible that c is complex valued. Of course, we will talk about what under what situations we will use complex wavelets and in what other situations we will use real wavelets and so on and uh, in a different lecture. All I have done here is I have just substituted to arrive at the last integral here in equations and just expanded the wavelet expression. So, it is an inner product between the signal x and the wavelet itself normalized inner product. The normalization factor being the energy of the wavelet itself. So, if the energy of the wavelet is normalized to 1 it is simply the inner product itself. So, the first useful interpretation of this continuous wavelet transform like in Fourier transform and short time Fourier transform is that it is a correlation coefficient between the signal and the wavelet at that location tau and at that scale s. The scaling s remember controls how wide the wavelet is or how narrow it is and the choice of mother wave will determine the shape itself. Right? So, the basic shape is decided by the choice of mother wave and the scaling parameter will then control whether you are looking at a wide window or a narrow window. And of course, the translation parameter will determine at what portion of the signal you are uh, situated. The second point is as we have mentioned earlier the wavelet necessarily satisfies an important zero average condition. Now, uh, as I have even mentioned earlier there are a few exceptions to this where the integral does not turn out to be 0, but nearly 0 and examples are Morlet wavelet and Mexican hat wavelet. In such cases perfect recovery of the signal is not possible and I will show this to you in the next lecture when we look at some MATLAB based examples. Whenever a wavelet satisfies a zero average condition perfect recovery is possible that is exactly what the synthesis equation also says. And the third point is that we have used the same wavelet in the synthesis equation and the analyzing equation. What we mean by analyzing equation is equation 7 where we are computing the transform. They need not be the same I could use different functions of course, which are related for the purpose of recovery and for the purpose of analysis and we will look at this more in detail when we discuss discrete wavelet transform. For the moment we have chosen the synthesizing function to be the same as the analyzing function itself that is we use the same function for analysis and recovery. The last point that I want to make in this lecture is that the continuous wavelet transform can be interpreted as a filter and this is very important because this has consequences in the understanding of DWT the implementation of CWT and so on. Of course, you can always view CWT as a time frequency analysis tool, but the, this interpretation helps us nicely switch over to DWT and the signal processing interpretation. To see the filtering nature of CWT all we have to do is rewrite the wavelet transform as a convolution of x with a function c bar which is nothing but a reflected version of the complex conjugate of the wavelet. So, not much different there is not much difference between c bar and c. Once I write this as a convolution it is now obvious that the wavelet transform acts as a filter because I know convolution all convolution operations are filtering operations from linear systems theory. The filter here being c bar, but it is not different from the wavelet it is only a reflected version. So, for all practical purposes you can treat the wavelet itself as a filter. In fact, it is if it is impulse response of the filter so to speak because if you recall linear system theory the output of a filter is the input convolved with the impulse response of the system. And the most important feature of this filter is that the duration and bandwidth change with the scale unlike in the short time Fourier transform. That is if I look at the duration of the wavelet well square duration 
then it is related to the duration of the mother wave through the scaling parameter s and the bandwidth of the wavelet is 1 over s times the bandwidth of the mother wave. That means something that we have seen already as I stretch the bandwidth becomes narrower, but the duration becomes longer and as I compress the vc versa happens. <coughs> this is something that we have seen before again this is an illustration of the point that we just mentioned. At the center we have this reference function that we have been speaking of mother wave whose magnitude of the Fourier transform is shown here. This is a representative of the energy the spectral density of the mother wave in the frequency domain and the, it has some finite bandwidth right. When I stretch that is when I look at scaling when I use scaling values greater than 1 in particular I use scale value 2 here then it the mother wave obviously becomes wider now. So, the child is wider, but the bandwidth is narrower. What this means is if I analyze the signal with this child with this dilated wave, then I will miss out on the local features in time, but I will get very nice localization of the energy in the frequency. In which frequency band? In exactly this frequency band to the left of the uh, the, uh, of the reference line that I have for the mother wave that is the center frequency of this dilated one is to the left of the center frequency of the mother wave obviously because the center frequency of the child is f naught by s that is the center frequency of the mother wave by s. And the same argument now applies to the compressed wave as, as well when I used a com when I use a compressed wavelet then I am able to capture the local features in time but then I will have more smearing of the energy in frequency relative to that of the mother wave. So, everywhere there is a reference function that we are looking at. So, essentially what we are doing is if you think of mother standing at this f naught in frequency domain then to the right it has children which act like high pass filters and to the left it has children which act like low pass filters. And this partitioning of frequency into the high and low frequency regime understanding of this is very important later on when we talk of a concept of a scaling function of course in a, in a different lecture. And <clears throat> I would like to conclude this lecture with a comparison of the short term Fourier transform versus the uh, 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 continuous wavelet transform. So, we have seen this figure earlier the left figure in the context of short term Fourier transform as to how the bandwidth remains same across all frequencies for the short term Fourier transform. Now, for the continuous wavelet transform case what is happening is by design that is the beauty here by design when I choose a wide wavelet its bandwidth as you have seen here is restricted to the low frequencies and it has a very narrow bandwidth right. So, come back here and see that it uh, the wide wavelet always concerns itself with the low frequency components and a compressed wavelet is always worried about the high frequency components. Whereas, in short term Fourier transform the window width is fixed and I traverse along uh, the entire frequency axis using the same window. In other words what is happening is that I, I search for all frequency components with this window in short term Fourier transform. Whereas, with the continuous wavelet transform the moment I choose a particular wavelet at a scale it automatically figures out what frequency components it should search for in the signal and that again is enabled by this single scaling parameter s. So, in effect what I am doing is I am controlling or I am traveling along the entire time frequency plane using this single scaling parameter and of course, the translation parameter to traverse along the uh, length of the signal that tying together the filtering and the time localization uh, filtering in frequency frequency localization and time localization is missing in short time Fourier transform. The tiling here uh, shown at the bottom explains the same point that we have been making until now. The short time Fourier transform is equivalent to passing the signal through a bunch of band pass filters which have same bandwidth regardless of where you are standing on the frequency axis. Whereas, with wavelets 
here I am showing for what is known as a dyadic wavelet tiling, we will you will understand this uh, when we talk about DWT, but for now dyadic means powers of 2. So, I am only showing you how as you change scales in powers of 2, the tiling the frequency and the time localization is varied. When you are looking at low frequencies, you are using wide windows and when you are when you want time localization, nice time, time localization and you, you are working in the high frequency regime and vice versa. So, as you move up the high frequencies, the nature of the tiles changes. So, it rearranges itself according to the duration bandwidth principle. Both short time Fourier transform and wavelet transform respect the duration bandwidth principle, but it is the knob or the handle that you are using which makes the big difference. So, with this we come to a close. Of course, this session has been fairly theoretical, but it is very important to understand the points that we have made in this lecture, so as to be able to move forward. In the next lecture, we will learn what is known as a scalogram and also look at a few MATLAB based examples on how to generate wavelets and how to compute the continuous wavelet transform, how to compute the scalogram and we will uh, of course, look at this with a few examples. So, hope you enjoyed the lecture, see you in the next lecture, thanks.